Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sermon Link. Pastor Larry here in Ministry of Pi United Methodist Church and uh, sharing with you uh, some reflection on this week's scripture. As you can tell, coming from out of the book of Isaiah, we'll be there in the sixth chapter. Now, those opening verses you see noted one through eight, this is the call of Isaiah, of course, the call of God upon his life uh, to respond to the mission of being prophet, that is the one who brings the voice and word of God to the people. And uh, it's a very uh, familiar and I think beloved passage because it reminds all of us as we hear the story of Isaiah, how it is that God calls each one of us. And um, our call may not be quite as dramatic as Isaiah's, but all of the elements that we find in this passage from Isaiah uh, is available to us in our experience of faith and in our life with God. So. Let's hear the reading, then we'll reflect a few moments on it. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. And then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. And the seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. So as I say, it's the, uh, the call of Isaiah and uh, dramatic, uh, certainly. Uh, it's this vision of this incredible holiness and Isaiah's feeling of such inadequacy in the presence of that holiness. Smoke and fire and these strange winged creatures. And Isaiah has no doubt that he is in the presence of God, and yet he also has no doubt that he is unworthy and certainly uh, should not be one called to a ministry of proclaiming God's word. As he says, my lips are unclean. And I think that's a way of not just saying, of course, he, you know, physically there's an issue here. This is a spiritual acknowledgement by Isaiah that he is not uh, whole, that he is broken, that he is less than what he knows he should be. And yet here this call of God is coming to him. So as I said at the beginning, I think uh, the experiences that I, Isaiah had are ones that we have. Uh, we believe that God is present with us. And I think what we have to acknowledge then is not just that we say that with our words and not just that we sense God's presence when we're in a church building or in the midst of a worship service, but that truly God is with us wherever we are, whatever we are doing. And Isaiah's call, Isaiah's awareness of God's presence, helps you and me sense that holiness of God that is with us always. Now, holiness is something that we, I think, refer to, but we may not uh, exactly be able to put words as to what that feels like or what that looks like when that happens. And I would encourage us to think not just in the sense of Isaiah's story with this awesome, almost beyond this world experience of smoke and fire and this incredible vision of a powerful God. But what we know through Christ is that Jesus makes God known to us. Jesus makes God available to us. You may remember in the story of Jesus when he dies on the cross, there's the indication that the curtain in the temple was torn in two. That curtain was believed held in or wrapped, uh, kept from the people the holiness of God. The curtain tore in two with the death of Jesus because uh, truly his 
love, his sacrificial love, his very extension of God's healing and peace into our world and lives tears apart the barrier. So we have access. And, you know, I think that it's helpful to recognize that that access to God, that holiness of God comes in rather, I'll say routine ways, although it's never quite routine, but maybe in daily ways. You know, it's a rainy day outside. Uh, I remember when I was in the Holy Land, they would talk about rain as being blessing, liquid blessing. And so, you know, rain, the beauty of, of creation, um, our experiences with those we love, um, some experience of beauty where we are inspired and our hearts are lifted up and when truly we have no words to describe what we're feeling, all of that to me is an indication of God's holiness and God's presence. But here's the thing, just to know God is present is the beginning. That's not the end of our faith. That's not where we stop the experience. That's actually where it begins. And like with Isaiah, when we are in the holiness of God, there is a call then that comes forth from God to us to participate with God, to be partners with God in this life and world. Now, Isaiah said, I'm not worthy. I, I can't take this on. And do you see what happens? This hot coal from the holy fires is brought to touch Isaiah's lips, healing him and, it says, forgiving him. Don't we know that that's what Christ does? That the grace of God flows through Jesus to us? That whatever is uh, less than what we know it should be in us, God takes that, embraces it, touches it, and heals us spiritually and in all other ways, forgives us uh, so that we can take our place uh, alongside God in the mission of being people of faith and sharing the love of Christ with others. So uh, I think Isaiah's story is a way of helping you and me get in touch with our stories and where it is God calls and where it is God's presence is most known to us and how that presence and how that call of God is then eliciting from us, wanting from us, some kind of response. What is it that God is calling you to be and to be about to do uh, to be involved in? What partnership with God uh, is God desiring from you and from me? If we lived each day uh, seeking that out, if we lived our lives uh, on a quest to discover that call and then respond to it, uh, what I believe is the meaning of our lives the purpose of our lives, our sense of fulfillment in this life would be deeper and would be stronger and would be more life-giving. I can't say what that is for you, and I know you can't say exactly what it is for me. We each, in our own way, like Isaiah, have to discover where that touch of God enables us, empowers us, heals us, forgives us, and then creates in us this possibility of living a life that is in line with God's purpose and God's plan. Well, that's the hope, isn't it, uh, for today and every day. So I hope you'll, you'll be aware of that and live into it. Hey, uh, just a programming note uh, and a bittersweet one for sure. Next week will be the uh, finale, the sign-off, if you will, of Sermon Link after four years of coming to you each and every week. I'll be retiring, as so many of you are aware. And so uh, it's just not possible to keep keep this going week after week. Uh, I certainly may do some things in the future, and I'll try to get that word out when I do. But as far as this format and the sermon link, um, we're going to bring it to close. I say we because Pastor Katya, my associate, is going to join me, and we'll come to you next week uh, for that sign-off. So I hope you'll look for that. And uh, let me say... Uh, what I'll say then too, which is thank you for your involvement, support, and for checking in and connecting with us each week over these last four years. It's been great, and I hope it's been enriching for you too. Well, friends, that's all for today. Uh, have a good rest of this week. We're heading into a, a holiday weekend with Memorial Day, and uh, you know things are starting to open up. We're feeling a little bit more secure. Uh, vaccinations are increasing, and 
there is uh, certainly the sense that life is returning to the kind of life that we want to live, need to live. So we're hopeful in that. But don't forget, where God's call and God waiting for response to that call is in the midst of it all. Take care, friends. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.